Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Kahn. I'm the Dean at the UNLV School of Medicine. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the UNLV School of Medicine 2020 Virtual Gratitude event. I just arrived here on April 1st of uh, this year in the middle of the worst health crisis that the world had seen in more than 100 years. And what I learned very quickly was that Las Vegas is a generous, cohesive community that knows how to come together to help each other. I learned that UNLV medical students, residents and fellows quickly rose to the occasion. We set up the first curbside testing facility. Our students manned phones to comfort sick Las Vegans and delivered meals and medical supplies to COVID affected patients and the homebound elderly. If you're here with us tonight, it's because you care about healthcare in Southern Nevada. You care about the education of our medical students and our strategy to create an environment to which they want to return and practice medicine. If you're here tonight, you're most likely already invested in our mission. You have supported a student with a generous scholarship. You have given to our student emergency fund or for our fund for excellence, or most recently to our first white coat campaign. You're a member of our team, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful, and we're incredibly grateful. But it's not really enough for me to express my gratitude. Let's hear it from our most important resource. Let's hear it from the students themselves. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm a third year medical student, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for investing in my future as a medical student. Thank you so much to the Anglesett Family Foundation and to all of the other donors for such generous scholarships for us UNLV medical students. Without your kindness, medical school would definitely be a lot more stressful. So thank you so much. Hopefully one day we'll be able to meet in person. Thank you again. Hi, I'm Rhett and I'd like to thank the Engelstad Family Foundation for providing me with the scholarship and opportunity to pursue my medical career. I look forward to serving the Las Vegas community in the near future. Hello, I'm Paul Johnsich with the UNLV School of Medicine and right now I'm in the school's virtual anatomy classroom. Throughout this program, you'll be hearing from students whose lives have been changed thanks to the generosity of people like you. And you'll hear from some of the donors themselves about why they decided to give. We begin with one student who has a compelling life story. And thanks in large part to a scholarship from donor Diana Bennett, he's well on his way to becoming a world-class physician. My first experience with, uh, I guess, hardship, um, I think everyone has their own hardships in their lives, but for me personally, it was losing my father when I was 16. My father actually shot my stepmother and one of her acquaintances before he was shot by a police officer. And I'll tell you, that was the, one of the hardest days of my life hearing that. Um, it's just something that you don't, you would never expect to happen in your own life, let alone anybody you know. It's something that you see about in movies, you read about in newspapers. And fortunately for me, I had athletics, I had my family, and I had my grades. And um, I think the, the outcome overall has been positive positive. and for me personally um, I miss my father dearly every day but I know he's looking down at me he's smiling and he's proud of what I've done. So I've actually wanted to be a doctor since I was a, a young child uh, probably middle school age and that was just planning the future kind of looking at career options but what really inspires me is everything that's happened since and how I've kind of grown into this profession. Um, losing my father, being an athlete, wanting to help people, loving science, it's all kind of come together in a nice meshwork. And that's what's led me here. And that's what keeps me going. The school's going to do great things in the future and that's, that's what's so exciting about coming to a new school. We, there's two classes before me and there's no, there's no set path for what that can become in the future. And 10 to 15 years from now I hope to look back and say, see Nevada become a healthcare center of the West along with you know, LA as you know, the population in Nevada increases from people from California and all over the world and ideally we'd see Nevada and UNLV um, School of Medicine become a healthcare center in Las Vegas and Nevada as a whole. Here's a little about our medical students. They are bright and they are connected to Nevada. 33% are from economically disadvantaged families. They volunteer all four years and they are ready to help Nevadans now by being certified as emergency medical technicians. I'd like to thank Drs. Gard and Florence Jamison for their continued support and leadership to myself and the greater Las Vegas community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jalen Paulos, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for the scholarship that you've awarded me. It's really afforded me the opportunity to focus on my school, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your donation and for your support. I am humbled and grateful to be able to go to medical school without tuition. 
Next, I'd like you to meet the family of a man who, when he died, left a generous amount of money to the School of Medicine. Patrick Thomas Rose was injured in the PEPCON explosion in 1988. He suffered a serious brain injury and required years of care. I think you'll enjoy meeting his family. You'll see they are proud Nevadans who want to make Southern Nevada a better place to live. My brother survived because he had the right doctor at the right place at the right time. And I think in his heart, we hope that this will help Las Vegas get the right doctors at the right place at the right time. Because I think only then will Las Vegas truly have what it needs in, in its um, position. There were so many people that cared and took such good care of him. People used to leave Las Vegas because their perception was that the level of care they were going to get here wasn't the quality that they thought they should be receiving. And I've watched that improve over the years. And the fact that we now have our own school of medicine and we'll be training our own doctors, I think will ensure that we keep them here in the valley and we will begin to have that quality care that maybe someday people will come here to be taken care of because we have increased the integrity of this program will increase the health care they can receive to that level. And you never know when you or somebody else in your family is going to need that. You know, we, we need to keep the talent here. We need them to stay with us in this valley. So I think he knew that the future of Las Vegas was at UNLV. Thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. Chris Engelson McGarry for everything that you've given me and all of us as students. We're so much better for it. Thank you. Hey, I'm Brandon Barrett and this is my wife Nishma and we wanted to thank the Ingolstadt Family Foundation for making medical school possible for us. Thank you. Thank you. I made it to my fourth year of medical school. And that's made me think more and more about what I want to do after residency. It's also made me more and more appreciative of the scholarship that I've received. So thank you Hope Anstead my scholarship donor. Because of you, I know that I will now have far more opportunities available to me, even after residency, than many of my medical student peers who didn't go here. To you and all Our students are extremely grateful to be able to attend medical school without incurring large amounts of student loan debt. It relieves a burden and helps them focus on their studies. And it's creating a unique culture of high achieving students who are helping each other become compassionate physicians who look forward to giving back. For example, here are three recipients of Ingolstadt Foundation Scholarships. For me personally, um, the scholarship really relieved a, a big weight on my shoulder um, and also my family because um, I know when I told my dad and my mom when I got the scholarship, they got really emotional because they were really stressing um, for themselves and for me and not having to spend the money and take out the loans. I know like my dad was thinking about having to sell the house and just to help me out and I was telling him no, like student, I'll take out student loans, but once I got the scholarship notification, it just completely changed everything. It relieved um, my own stress and their stress, so I think it, it's just really amazing. Yeah, I completely agree with you, especially coming from a first generation, you know, college student family. When I'm the first one to go to college and, you know, even more medical school, having this help really alleviates like a big, you know, struggle from or family shoulders. Yeah, I think it definitely alleviates a lot of stress so that we're not so much worried about our financial situation and, and basing our decisions off of that. We can more focus on what our interests are, what we like, and how to become the best physicians we can be. But I remember when I got the uh, email that I was a scholarship recipient and I started screaming and I told my mom and she didn't believe me. She had me read the email to her word for word and none of us believed it because it was just it was just such a happy moment. I think being a donor is, is something that's like incredibly human, like a really, really positive aspect of humanity that you're willing to believe in somebody you may not know, um, but you're willing to believe in them enough to give them the support to realize their dreams. Yeah, I think it's really, it's incredibly selfless of them too. Um, and it definitely kind of shows me kind of what I would want to do um, down the road once I'm practicing and kind of, um, kind of take the tradition in passing down money and helping other students with scholarships as well. So it's really inspiring of them to do. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that it's just a great role model. Just being like them, you know, being kind and 
selfless, like you mentioned, and just hopefully being able to in the future sponsor a scholarship as well would be would be amazing. If Chris Inglestad was here today, I just I just want to give her a big hug and tell her how much she's making a difference in my life um, and the fact that she's willing to believe in me, somebody who she doesn't know. Yeah, if Chris uh, were here, I would probably also get, try to give her a hug, but depending on how she uh, takes that in today's COVID world. Um, but I would just really try to express my gratitude to her for helping um, me financially through this. So if Chris Engelstad was here, I think I would, you know, just thank her from the bottom of my heart. Just, just giving the scholarship means a lot to me and my family. Uh, coming from Mexico, being an immigrant, and coming from a first generation family, uh, just having the ability to come to medical school with as, you know, as minimum as minimum as a debt as possible, uh, it just helps me focus on school and realize my dreams. Uh, to be a physician and help everyone in Las Vegas. I feel like just the financial support that we get from the Anglestad, Anglestad Foundation really makes that difference in the University School of Medicine. Just having that atmosphere where we can collaborate and don't have to worry about, you know, just like out competing each other. I think that makes a huge difference. As soon as you kind of walk into campus, um, even as an applicant, all the older students are really trying to get to know you. Um, and are really friendly and um, really want to know um, how, like the type of person you are t um, to make sure that they do accept people that they would get along with and make sure there's no competi any competitiveness um, with anyone. So that's something I noticed from day one. Yeah, I would say that when you're an undergrad and you're trying to get into medical school, it's, uh, it's a little more cutthroat. You're trying really hard to make your resume as best as possible and you start to like lose some of those close interactions with your peers because you're in competition with them. But when we came here, it's like, uh, it's this warm environment that like, I've never had staff care about me so much. And when you don't know something, um, your peers and your, uh, and your classmates are just so willing to help you and really is this nurturing, fostering, caring environment that I'm, it's new to me. Chris Engelstad was unable to attend this recording, but she sent along this message. It reads, the School of Medicine students are the future of healthcare in our community and well beyond. The Ingolstadt Foundation sees the potential in our scholarship recipients, exhibiting the drive and determination needed to succeed in the medical field. On a personal level, it's been so enriching to get to know our scholars, and I look forward to meeting many more as the strength and scope of the School of Medicine grows. Hi, I'm Carmen Hollyfield. I'm a second year medical student. I just want to say thank you for helping me through my journey through medical school. Hi, my name is Daniel Einlander, and I'm a first year medical student. I just wanted to thank the Engelstead Family Foundation for their scholarship and for how they've changed my life. Greg Calfe here, Charter Class of 2021, sending a big thanks to all of our donors and support in the community. You're changing lives forever. Hi, I'm Barbara Atkinson. I'm the founding dean at the UNLV School of Medicine, now retired. And if you hear my bird in the background, uh, he's helping me uh, Thank you all for everything you've done for, for UNLV and for the School of Medicine. To get us started at the very beginning, you were essential. Everybody has worked so hard to make this dream come true. I particularly am happy about the scholarships for our medical students. They are so grateful and they mean so much to them to be able to, to get a career in medicine and to be able to continue to live in Las Vegas and Nevada in the future. We're very pleased for that and for everything that everybody's done for all of our programs and all of the work that people have contributed uh, to make this whole school happen. We're now getting ready to graduate our first class of students this spring, so that'll be a really exciting event and just to be the start of the major advance to health care for the whole state of Nevada. Thank you so much for all you've done. Ingleside Family Foundation, thank you for making it possible for me to achieve a higher education. I will graciously carry on your mission to serve those most vulnerable in the Las Vegas community. Hello, I'm Crystal Odin, a second year med school student, and I'm here with my family. We wanted to thank you very much for the scholarship that I received. So guys, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I am extremely grateful for your generosity and donations. Thank you for allowing me to pursue a career in medicine and to hopefully serve the Las Vegas community as a physician in the future. 
It's hard to believe, but members of our charter class who first walked into this classroom in July of 2017 are due to graduate this spring. During the COVID crisis, many of them volunteered in the community and in our call center, providing fact-based information to a frightened public. So the pandemic started at the end of our third year, basically when in the middle of finals. So the exams that we take before our second big board exam, we were in the middle of those. Those were canceled. Um, from there, uh, our school opened a call center and the three of us and many of our classmates uh, volunteered um, to screen calls for our drive through test center. Um, so I started off doing that. Um, I took some very just heart-wrenching uh, calls. Um, the one that I remember in particular, it was a Spanish-speaking call, was a mother that had symptoms of COVID. And she was essentially quarantined in a bedroom by herself with her cell phone, while her husband and their three little ones were outside, you know, trying to stay away from her so that they wouldn't catch it. The husband uh, was calling to get her a COVID-19 test, and unfortunately at that time, we just didn't have enough tests. So I was placing people on the wait list. There was just so much fear. Nobody knew what the course of the disease was. Um, so about two to three weeks into the COVID-19, I got a call from my unit. Um, the governor of Nevada had activated the Nevada National Guard um, and uh, Colonel Martin Bain, who is our state air surgeon, called me and asked me if I'd be interested in helping uh, in the Southern Nevada region set up more test sites and bring more testing to Southern Nevada. And especially after I had received that phone call and, and similar phone calls at working at the call center, I absolutely said yes. One of the only test centers was at the UNLV School of Medicine and their capacity was about 300 a day at that time. We knew that we needed to expand that capacity. So I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity that I had uh, to serve in the National Guard uh, and help bring more testing to our community. And as of now, actually, um, I still sometimes get reports from the unit um, as they're doing testing, and they're testing up to 2,500 a day here. Um, so it's just amazing how those early days uh, were so different than how it is now. You know, one of the stories that I recall specifically was the mother that had called who uh, lived alone with three children. Um, they were all younger. I don't recall the exact ages, but I think the oldest was about eight years old. So they were all three young children and one of them was exhibiting symptoms of the cold or flu-like illness. So um, she was very concerned about that, in, uh, that you know, the child, but also uh, was very concerned about not being able to do anything. And on the phone, she was crying because she had nobody else to, to help her out. And in her mind, her three children were going to die. And that is how she saw the situation. And it was just very, um, a very emotional situation. And so providing her with the information and the resources to look at alone was just enough to get her to understand that there's a support system in the community for her, that we will take care of them, that we will provide the testing for her and her children. And that alone was enough to calm her so that she can um, think of the next step and how to handle that. I remember, um, I mean, the whole like beginning stages of COVID, the whole time, Everybody was so unsure, we were so unsure, no one knew what was going on, and then the government shutdown happened um, in the middle of our, our shelf exam week. I felt, I felt really helpless, I felt like I, I know I have something that I can offer, there has to be something that I can do, I've learned X, Y, and Z, um, I can at least do very basic things, but nothing was there yet we had nothing this was a brand new thing the first opportunity that i had to um, to volunteer was with the call center um, it was a lot we got we were getting thousands of calls a day um, i was there pretty much every day some days up to like 12 hours a day because we had a long long wait list of people who were just waiting to hear back from us uh, at the time, we had no testing. We were going day by day to seeing how many tests we could find or that they could get a hold of for us. But it was so, it was such an amazing opportunity to have the ability to be in this position that we were able to be in, where I could be there as a support person, as a part of a greater system to actually help people directly who were being affected by the pandemic. Um, I had a, 
countless people calling who were crying and upset because it's scary. Like COVID, was, it, it is scary still now. Uh, but at the time it was even more scary. My one piece of advice is to always remember why you're doing this. Uh, so for me, I had a, at a very young age interaction with the medical community and with my own family doctor. The way he cared for patients, in my mind, was how I wanted to care for people later on. Uh, medical school is really hard. <laughs> Shocker. It's really, really hard. Uh, it's a lot more difficult than I even thought it was as an undergraduate student. Uh, however, if you keep your motivation, um, your why, uh, close to your heart and and at the forefront of your mind, I think it makes medical school a lot easier because when things get tough, as they inevitably will, um, you can keep going. We have all experienced that and seen how tough it can get, especially with this pandemic as medical students, which disrupted both our um, course uh, as medical students, but the course of the entire world around us as well. Uh, but what that made us realize is that as healthcare providers, uh, future healthcare providers for, for us is that um, there was a focus on us now. The world was looking to us, the community was looking to us for answers. And uh, that reaffirmed our position and um, the role that we play in our communities uh, at the local level and at large. So I think having that experience really um, changed the way we look at the profession we're going into and really affirmed that we have a role beyond just the hospital. We can and do make differences as medical students. Like I see it every day. Um, it doesn't feel like it all the time because we're we're babies and, we, and, we, and we're still learning and we never feel like we know anything and it's hard, but we really do make a difference. So it kind of feels like the world's ending with the pandemic and everything else that's happening, um, but the extra help that I've gotten to go to school has made it easier for me to focus on my studies so I can become the best physician for my future patients. And I, I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you so much for your generosity. The scholarship really makes a great deal of difference to students like me, and it's something that I'll always be grateful for. So thank you so much. Hi, good morning, it's Anita. I'm getting ready to go deliver some babies on my labor and delivery shift. I want to give a special thanks to the Bacchus family. Some of our donors enjoy getting to know and following the progress of their scholarship recipients. Here's Don Snyder sitting down with one of his scholarship recipients, fourth year student Marwa Maki, who's very grateful to Don and his wife Dee. Uh, Marwa, it's really nice to get together and catch up a little bit. Uh, I'm really curious as to how things are going with your education. You're in your final year uh, and uh, that's pretty exciting in and of itself. But I've heard such good things about you. But tell me from your point of view, how, how's it going? Uh, it's been going really well. Uh, this is our fourth year, so it's been a lot more exciting than sitting in lecture because we're doing all clinical right now. Uh, so we're in the hospital pretty much um, the whole time. Of course, it's been difficult with the with the pandemic, so it's it's presented a lot of changes. So we've had to, to deal with that. So what's next? What's coming up? Uh, have you picked a specialty and where, where do you go from here? So uh, yes, uh, I have picked a specialty. I've chosen internal medicine and um, I chose internal medicine because I really liked uh, the ability to see patients long term and follow their progress and uh, you're able to, to learn all uh, aspects of disease and kind of uh, different pathophysiology for different things. Uh, and I think I'll be able to help my family the most that way. Uh, and my extended family, just because they're, uh, they have all these uh, different conditions that you commonly faced as an internal, uh, internal medicine physician. Well, that makes, that makes tremendous sense. And I'm real proud of you for doing that. For the community is meeting a need. What you just talked about uh, is exactly that. So it has tremendous impact. Uh, on the university, on the, on the community, and I'm really proud of uh, what you're doing. What about residencies? What have you done there, and where, where do you go in that regard? Um, so uh, I will be applying to internal medicine. So as a fourth year now, uh, mainly I'm just doing the rotation, have been doing the rotations to figure out where I want to go. Uh, but I think internal medicine is the is the way for me. And then when it comes to programs uh, afterwards, I would be happy to stay in Las Vegas. This is um, at the the only home that I've known away from uh, my hometown in Iraq, um, and this is the only family that I know. 
and uh, and my extended and my family is here. Direct family is also here. Well, that's where I was going with the question. Yes. <laughs> what you see yourself doing a few yes. years from now, and I was hoping you would say it was going to be here in Las Vegas because that was another part of uh, what was so important to us in starting the School of Medicine is having students that had a connection here and had a desire to be here and stay here and practice medicine because we really need uh, more people like you. But uh, uh, but again, I'm really proud of what you've done, what you are doing, and where you're going with, uh, with your life, because it really is going to make a difference, uh, not only to our school, but to our community as, as a whole. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you saying that. And um, I wanted to let you know that uh, throughout all these years, so it's been what, this is the beginning of my fourth year, um, I have felt so supported by uh, not only the people that were uh, in the uh, around me like here in the administration or in the hospital but just knowing that uh, somebody like you uh, Mr. Snyder and your wife as well um, who have been there who have believed in my future and took a chance on me and uh, and gave me a scholarship in order to go to medical school um, I have heard some horror stories about people that uh, get out of medical school with a quarter of a million dollars in debt and uh, and this crazy burden that they have to go through um, and which uh, and sometimes have kind of dictated what they want to do uh, for specialty and kind of limited their options whether it's uh, specialty related or geographically as well so I feel free of that burden just due to the generous gift that you had uh, given me and not only me but other students that have come along the way where I come from we have a saying that I have carried stone and I have carried iron but I've never carried anything that is heavier than debt and having to think about all that debt that I was going to come out with um, and just knowing that somebody out there was looking out for me and looking out for other students uh, it just really means the world to me. Well, there, there's, there's a lot of ways that donors uh, can help uh, a school like this, uh, but scholarships are something that not only help the school, but they change lives. And, and that was why we got involved with the scholarship program uh, from the very beginning. And I know from the first time that Dee and I met uh, you, uh, we knew that uh, our scholarship was in really good hands. Thank you so much. And I wanted to say, so I, I feel like I talked a lot about what it meant for me personally, uh, but I know that your support has meant a tremendous amount to the school as well. And I've actually met patients that were excited to hear that we have a new medical school here uh, in, uh, in Nevada. And they would talk to me without even uh, without me prompting them. They would talk to me about how much the, uh, the new school would mean for them and to have that medical care that you, uh, Las Vegas really needs. Well, and we're just getting started in that regard. This, this school has so much potential and to have 60 students graduating each year uh, is a really wonderful start. But we have a long way to go and we need a lot of help to get there, but it's people uh, like you, students like you that will do what you do that will make a difference and, and really help people to understand the impact that uh, this school can have if we just uh, support it and let it grow and let it uh, really uh, mature in the way that uh, a school of medicine needs to. But uh, I couldn't be more pleased with uh, my involvement uh, with the School of Medicine, uh, but uh, our involvement, uh, D and I have tr just tremendous pride uh, in our involvement with you. So good luck to you in your future, and thank I know you so you'll much. do well. Thank you to you as well. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Anthony Chang. I'm a second year medical student. Um, I'm one of the recipients for the Engelstead Scholarship, and I just wanted to express my gratitude and appreciation for um, everything that this has done for me. Um, it's really taken out a lot of the stress with medical school and paying for it and so um, I just can't thank my donors enough and I just wanted to take this time to do so. Thank you. I want to say thank you so much to the donors who made it possible for me and my classmates to be in school here at UNLV, um, especially to Diana Bennett who donated for my scholarship. Hi, my name is Andrew Cruz and I'm an M1 here at UNLV School of Medicine. And I would just like to thank you so much for donating to the scholarship fund and helping me get through medical school. Thank you. Dr. Tony Marlin and his wife Renee are scholarship donors as well. And they recently visited with one of their students, Taylor Gillis, for the very first time. So I, I could say without their generosity, I would never be in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, but given this as a medical opportunity, I think uh, Having Las Vegas, uh, the UMC, the types of patient populations that we're working up down here, there's so much to learn and so much to gain from coming down to Las Vegas. I would agree with that. I, I just think our population continues to grow 
We do not have enough doctors. The hope is that if they have a good experience and they come to tolerate hot weather in the summer, <laughs> that uh, they, many of them will stay. And I know that not all of them will by any means, but hopefully uh, some of them will. It's been one of the things I've really wanted to see happen for a long time. A, a, a city like Las Vegas doesn't become real to me unless it has a university and a medical school. I can't imagine, have, imagine having uh, a university here without a medical school. The thing here too is that we need doctors. The city is, we are short in the, in the entire state actually, uh, per capita. So it's important to have a medical school. In 10 years, I would hope that we have a lot more real residencies uh, for kids that, so we can have them stay here. Hey UNLV alumni, this is Addie Guida and Pop. We wanted to take this opportunity to thank you so much for supporting my dream of becoming a doctor. I would not be here without you guys um, and I cannot express my gratitude more. I hope that you and your families are staying safe in the pandemic and have a great holiday season. Thank you always, guys. Thank you to all of the UNLV School of Medicine donors. We appreciate your contribution to our medical education more than you'll ever know. Hello, I just wanted to say thank you to all the UNLV School of Medicine um, donors for the scholarships. It's um, You guys are the reason why many, many medical students, including myself, are able to attend medical school and fulfill our dreams of becoming a doctor. So hopefully I, in the future I can do the same for future generations of medical students. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Keith Whitfield, president of UNLV. A great medical school, like a great university, is only as good as the community partners who support it. I've learned in my brief time with UNLV that Las Vegas is a community that proudly supports its hometown academic institution. Southern Nevadans know that a great university enriches the culture, business, and healthcare footprint of the entire community. From its inception, the UNLV School of Medicine has sought out the best and brightest students in Nevada and the surrounding states. We know that medical students who have ties to a community are more likely to return home to practice medicine one day. We also know that patients who can find the specialty care they need for themselves and their families right here in Las Vegas won't need to use McCarran Airport as a waiting room. Increasing the number of physicians in Southern Nevada is a goal that's good for all. Many of you watching this event tonight made an early investment in students who weren't even enrolled yet. It was your scholarship support that allowed us to attract students to a medical school that had no history. We're grateful to each of you for your input, your passion, your hard-earned resources, but mostly for your ability to see what could be. We hope you're proud partners who will stay the course as our medical school enters its next phase of growth. You have our deepest gratitude, as well as the gratitude of the students you've supported. Thank you again for your generosity. And now to wrap things up, I'm joined by Dr. Mark J. Kahn, the Dean of the UNLV School of Medicine. Dr. Kahn, thanks again. People are curious about the curriculum. Can you talk to us more about what our medical students go through during their four years? So um, medical school is a four-year program. Students start out with mostly classroom-based um, instruction for about their first year and a half at UNLV. Now that's not just sitting in lecture, a lot of that is interactive learning and flipped classrooms. But that's really the classroom, not practical part of their education. For the latter part of their medical school curriculum, the students are working bedside with physicians, taking care of patients. So they're really learning how to function in a healthcare environment, and they're learning how to take care of patients. For our students, that third year of medical school, they participate in what we call a longitudinal integrated curriculum. So what that means is that they spend time both on the inpatient side as well as in outpatient clinics working directly with patients. Tell us about residencies. Has the number of residencies increased in Las Vegas or Henderson? 
So firstly, residencies are what students do after medical school in their pathway to become licensed physicians. The number of residency spots in the Las Vegas Valley has increased, but most of that's been through independent hospitals. So some independent hospitals in the Valley have their own residency programs that are not affiliated with the medical schools. Given that we're a new medical school, how prepared do you think our students are compared to students at state medical schools around the country? I think our students are incredibly prepared to take care of a diverse group of patients. Because of the diversity of our population in Las Vegas and because of the diversity of our students' experience, taking care of patients in a variety of hospitals in both inpatient and outpatient settings, plus our students go through a number of simulation exercises where they use models and mannequins to learn how to practice medicine. Our students come out um, really ready to take care of the Las Vegas population, which is, after all, is our mission. We recently broke ground on the uh, new medical education building, which is a donor-funded project. When do you anticipate move-in? I would hope that we'd be able to move into that building within the next 24 months. That's really exciting for us because it's really going to be a face for UNLV Medicine, and we're really thankful to the donors who made that a possibility. And Dean Kahn, virtually all of our students are on scholarships in the first four classes, most of them full scholarships. Is that sustainable? You know, I think that um, being able to go to medical school, regardless of your financial background, is critical to maintaining a diverse physician workforce. Really through the generosity of donors like yourselves, we're able to have a diverse medical school class and we're able to train the next generation of physicians to care for the people in our community. And for that, we thank you. Thank you, Dean Kahn. And thank you to all of you for watching. Hopefully you have a better idea of how grateful our students are and how donors like you are helping transform healthcare in Southern Nevada.